Hey y'all, welcome back for another episode of MD Tribe. I'm very excited for this week's episode because we are finally showcasing a fourth year medical student and what it's like at that level. We have student doctor Asase Obo gracing us with her presence this week. She is a daughter of Nigerian immigrants. She's also undergone this whole process with her sister at Michigan State University. She's a current applicant for residency and I'm gonna let y'all find out which specialty <laughs> if you haven't already found out. She is also a visual storyteller, an IG influencer. She's sponsored by Figs. She's SMA national president. She's living in Flint, Michigan and tells us about that experience as well. We honestly talk about a lot of things in this interview because she's a very diverse and experienced and well-traveled woman. So we talk about it all because I just, had a lot to ask so <laughs> i'm very excited for y'all to see a snippet of her life her journey her struggles her successes and how well she's doing and how far she will go so without further ado we have boss asase obo <laughs> Welcome back. This week we have a very special guest that I came across on Instagram. This queen literally does it all. And without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we have featured Dr. Obo. Can you go ahead and please introduce yourself? Hey everyone, my name is Asase Obo. I am a fourth year medical student at Michigan State University College of Human Medicine, currently based out in Flint where I completed my third and fourth like clinical rotations, which has been such an awesome experience. Um, but I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. Uh, my parents uh, immigrated to the LA area from Nigeria. So that's where I was born and raised. Went to UCLA for undergrad um, and got my bachelor's in biology, which I hated. Um, and then went on to the University of Southern California, where I got my master's of public health with a focus in global health leadership, because that's something that I was really passionate about, um, and then did a one-year post back at Charles R. Drew University, also in the Los Angeles area, before I finally left California um, and came to Michigan with my sister, actually, for med school. So that's a little bit about as far as the medical journey goes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just get started with a lot of questions. So um, what actually from the very beginning, what drew you to medicine? Like who inspired you? What inspired you to go into medicine? Yeah, so I mean, one, I'm Nigerian. And if any of you all know about Nigerian parents and their lovely uh, traits, uh, I mean, I think it might even be more common regardless amongst like immigrant families is that they want their kids to have a secure future. And that means working a job that they know cannot be taken away from them. And so for Nigerians in our culture, it, that is being a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. Everything else is like, is like, what is that? <laughs> and, so, and so growing up, our, my parents um, really kind of let us know that we would be doctors. Now, I will say that God had to come through and confirm that for me. Like I'm a very, I wouldn't say I'm stubborn, but I need to know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I'm not going to go over here and sacrifice so much uh, for a career that I'm not passionate about, right? So I think um, I had, I've had a couple different experiences throughout life from like my mom, she had breast cancer twice. And seeing that experience um, in comparison to like my grandparents who were sick and ill in Nigeria and didn't get the kind of care that they needed um, kind of got me thinking about medicine. Um, and when I went to college, I started doing a lot of uh, more so public health work. That's kind of how I came into, I, I was introduced to the field of public health. I started just to see the need uh, for black physicians and for physicians uh, that cared about underserved communities, that were empathetic, that had some similar experiences. Um, and I just started to feel like I was called to fill that gap um, in that specific way. And I always loved like the sciences and anatomy and things like that. So I just started pursuing it and trying to pursue um, just experiences that would kind of further confirm it for me because I knew the experience to be very arduous. So 
it's been a lot of different things along the way, but I think those are the, those are the main things. Yeah. And while the whole story about um, your mom having breast cancer twice, that is incredible. And I'm glad, you know, that she was able to get through that. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> I just turned 60 last week, actually. Oh, happy birthday to her. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any medical professionals in your family already? Or are you and your sister kind of like the first in your family? Yeah, we're going to be the first doctors in our family. I will say we have a sprinkling of like nurses. My mom is actually a dentist, but no, no doctors. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience like applying to medical school? Um, again, Nigerian parents can be crazy, but mine specifically were just of a different breed. Mm -hmm. And they was just all up in my business. And so from whatever their friends told them, they believed I was supposed to apply to medical school right after college, that I was already late. I should have applied during college. However, I was not ready. My GPA wasn't ready. My MCAT wasn't ready, but they were ready. So they stressed me the heck out um, until I finally agreed to apply, knowing that I shouldn't get in because none of this, the numbers were not there. Like the experiences and stuff, sure. Like it was very clear, like medicine is where this girl wants to go. Mm -hmm. Um, but as far as metrics were, they were horrible. Um, and so I think I finally was like, fine on June 1st, just because they stressed me out so much. I needed, I wanted the peace of mind. Um, and I was like, y'all paying for it. I'm not about to lose a dime knowing that this is a bad idea. I didn't have any mentorship at the time to be like, uh, you know, you shouldn't apply when you're not ready. And my parents didn't understand what not ready was. So, um, I ended up applying the first time, not getting in anywhere, got a bunch of secondaries, wasted a whole lot of money, but it wasn't mine, so today. <laughs> um, and afterwards, I mean, at the end of the day, I still went through my master's program, did the post back, got the A's that I needed to boost my GPA up, retook the MCAT, and then applied when I felt more confident. Okay. Um, yeah, so still a crazy experience that I was applying with my sister. Um, and like just the struggle of making sure that I wasn't comparing myself to her and, and understanding that regardless that I was still worthy um, of becoming a physician no matter when it happened. Yeah, that is, that is very stressful. Do you guys apply um, to the same exact schools? Uh, I would say a majority. She was trying to stay in California. I was trying to get out. So <laughs> that was, I think, the major difference. But yeah. Okay. Did you both find out that you got into um, Michigan State like the same day or is it one after the other? <laughs> no, we did not find out the same day. So let me tell you what happened. Basically, <laughs> we interviewed January 26, 2017. Okay. My 25th birthday was January 31st. And I was trying to hit my 25th country for my 25th birthday. And so I had planned like a trip to go to Belize um, with my friends to see her family because um, she's Belizean. And so we interviewed that Saturday or that Friday. I probably left like that Monday on the 30th. And so at Michigan State, at least, they would, they would look through applications like the third Tuesday or something really crazy of every month. So, and they would de-identify everything. So they hit her application on my birthday. And so she got it on my birthday but they did not hit mine on my birthday. So she FaceTimes me like, oh my God, I got it. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. But I'm also crying because I'm like, I got to wait longer. Oh Lord, I don't know if I got it in me, Jesus. So it was uh, definitely an interesting birthday. Um, very interesting birthday. I was still like super, super happy for her, for sure. Um, but that extra three weeks of waiting was, was a lot. So I got in the next time that they reviewed applications. So yeah <laughs> that seems so stressful <laughs> a little bit a little bit it helped that i had pretty beaches to look at and good food so yeah yeah but just like being human in general i feel like we tend to like look around and see like oh you know do they have a leg up or am, am i doing as good so that can eat away at you at your peace exactly yeah so i mean i think even now, like as I'm applying to residency, it's like comparison that I'm sure everybody has heard this quote, that comparison is the thief of joy. So whatever you do, no matter where you are on your journey, I don't know who's listening, but you have to fight yourself and like do not allow yourself to compare your journey, your path, your scores with anyone else because your journey is specific to you. And I think that that was something that I 
had time to practice a lot um, just growing up and also like having the opportunity to apply with my sister. So better, it's better this would go around. Like I have so much more peace this go around, but it's still been, it's still been a, a journey for sure. So now you guys are both applying as residents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you applying into the same specialty? No, we're okay. not. <laughs> yeah, so even that's different because the way in which different specialties release residency interviews, the timing is different. Like I'm going into internal medicine, there are thousands of applicants. So that mess takes a long time to get through. So they're just now starting, like a lot of the big programs are just now starting to release invites. Um, whereas if you're going into peds or med peds or even like anesthesia, there's way, there's fewer applicants, less applications to get through. People are getting applications from day one, from the day the applications were accessed. And I'm sitting here like, it's all good, girl. It's all good. <laughs> so. And what specialty is your sister applying into? She's applying to med peds. Oh, okay. That's like a, I wouldn't say a rare, but it's like a smaller specialty. Mm -hmm. Much smaller very focused <laughs> yeah yeah i thought about it for a second but i was like i can't do parents they're crazy when they're in the parent hat mm -mm. you y'all be talking nonsense for no reason i just can't do it, can't do it. <laughs> okay so you went to michigan state university how has your experience been there so far yeah um i will say i know that i was supposed to be here i feel like a lot of the things that i've been able to accomplish um, from being president of the Student National Medical Association to traveling as much as I have, the research I've been able to do. And a lot of the experiences that I've had was because I had like, um, my Dean of Student Affairs is my best friend. She's been super supportive and we've just had, she already knew the community um, of physicians in all the cities that I've lived in um, since being in Michigan that would support me on my journey and encourage me to do what, to do it all, which is like kind of like my, my, motto so i'm definitely glad that i came here because the support i will say has been surreal and i think the one of the main reasons i wanted to come here as well was so that i could live and work in flint um i think the flint water crisis was still a pretty hot topic around the time that i was applying and so msu had this special program called the leadership for medicine uh for the underserved and so if you got into it then you would automatically get placed in flint for your third and fourth year Whereas we have like six other different campuses. So you can be placed in a rural place. You could be, you know, mm, mm. so <laughs> I was like, I will come for sure if I get into that program so that I can actually see what it looks like to live in a community like this and, and be able to build that empathy and that connection um, with my patients. And I've been able to do that. And so it's definitely been a win. Well, yeah, I was going to say, when I think of Flint, Michigan, that's the first thing that comes to my mind, the whole water yeah. crisis, yeah. Um, and how it still hasn't been resolved, <laughs> and yeah. it's ridiculous. But also, to um, touch upon the whole satellite campuses thing, mm -hmm. I, didn't know, I didn't know your school did that as well. Our school does that, so at Florida State University, we have those campuses throughout the state of Florida, and I know what you're talking about, the rural campuses, we have that too. <laughs> Yeah, and it's only for third and fourth year. Like first and second year, you're only between two campuses, either in Grand Rapids or East Lansing. Um, so it's that move from third from second to third year if you're not ready or if you don't get the spot that you want. That's a little that can be tough. It can be mm -hmm. tough. Yeah. Awesome. So I know you recently finished taking your step two CK. How did mm -hmm. that go? I mean, I will say with everything going on, it definitely didn't go the way I wanted it to go, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's just, it's going to be just fine for, for the next step. So, I mean, this is what I say to people whenever you take any kind of standardized exam, especially if you're doing all the crap that I'm doing, <laughs> I, I mean, I, this, I feel like this year has been specifically rough, um, just from like personal losses. Um, and having to be in a leadership position during such a time of like tragedy and you know and hardship i think that is that has been that's a lot on the mental so just for anyone that's taking board exams and stuff right now like just give yourself grace give yourself the time that you need to to do your best mm -hmm. that's that's that on that but either way you're not your score you're still qualified and worthy of the space and worthy of being here so 
<laughs> take it past and move on. Yeah. How was your experience or, you know, how did you land into your role for SNMA? Um, well, I will say again, like I didn't really have any mentorship uh, throughout undergrad. And so when I found out about the SNMA after I graduated, I was mad. Um, they have undergraduate camp, um, undergraduate chapters called MAPS and things like that all across the nation that I could have been involved in, but I never knew. Mm -hmm. And so I think I decided back then, you know, like whenever I get into medical school, because I still didn't even understand that I could still be a part of it as a pre-med. But I was like, whenever I get into medical school, I am going to join and I'm going to do what I can within my area to make sure that students know that we exist and that we're here to support them. Mm -hmm. And so when I got into medical school um, at Michigan State, I, I guess I would say I kept my word. <laughs> Um, but I was also interested in learning more about the organization, learning more about um, the leadership positions, because it also felt like a safe space uh, to grow as a leader and to kind of find my voice, right? Because I was already interested in advocacy. I was already interested in public health and mentorship and those kind of things. So it, it, it's like a literally a perfect little bubble that you can go in and come out popping, <laughs> essentially. Um, and so I just started to pursue different uh, leadership positions some of which I didn't feel qualified for, but other people thought I was, um, and some of which I thought that I could contribute. And so I think like each step of the way made me more and more um, ready to pursue the position of being president. And again, you have to be elected into the position. So I, I, I decided, you know, I think that this is a position where I have a lot to offer. And so I ran for it and the people's elected me. So we're here. Madam President, <laughs> and you're doing great. You're like the face of the organization. Like, it's awesome what you're doing. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. We have chapters here at um, FSC as well. And we also have MAPS. I was in MAPS. Oh, I know you're mad that you weren't in it. But I was in MAPS in um, undergrad for all four years. Awesome. Yeah, That's so been awesome. <laughs> All right, so I kind of want to touch upon your experience like with your rotations. So, and kind of like when you decided you would do internal medicine, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so, I mean, I came into third year thinking I was going into emergency. I am a broad person per se. Like, again, like I'm a professional photographer. I'm in this creative space, but I'm also a total nerd and I love to study and understand the human body. And I love, just learning and traveling and whatever. I feel like I'm a very well-rounded person. And so when I looked into the different specialties, the specialties that were super specific did, weren't, weren't of interest in, to me. And it was kind of in line with just who I am as a person. So that yeah. kind of left like family med, um, emergency, internal medicine, uh, and general surgery. And so I think from there, people tend to kind of weed out what they're interested in based on is it procedural based or is it like really just like cerebral and also what's the lifestyle like like I didn't come into to med school straight out of college I came four years after college so I'm over here looking at what does balance look like for me because this is just the beginning yeah. um, and so I think that's kind of how I ruled out surgery I love procedures I love to use my hands I love anatomy but I was like but your lifestyle ain't looking too cute so no um, and so that kind of left me down with like emergency and internal medicine, family medicine. I was like outpatient. I fall asleep on my feet. So no. Um, so I was like thinking, okay, I think it's going to be emergency because I think it's shift work. I'll be able to incorporate all these other things that I love um, outside of it and it kind of makes sense. So I was on this emergency medicine path, but my first clerkship was internal medicine. And I just realized like I need this extra two to three days that I get with patients when they're admitted versus the hours I'll get with them in the emergency room, whether I, where I just, I'm just triaging, like, do you need to be admitted or can I let you go? I'll let you go. You can be admitted. Let you go. Be admitted. You know what I'm saying? And so I needed more of the story. Um, and so internal medicine just felt like a good fit. Um, you also, when you are, especially inpatient, inpatient internal medicine, because internal medicine can also do outpatient as well. So um, I think that's what I realized first. And then of course, from internal medicine, you can subspecialize and a lot of the subspecialties are still broad because you can still round with patients on the floors and still do the generalist thing, but you can also do procedures. Mm -hmm. So I can use my hands. So I'm leaning, there's a subspecialty that I'm kind of leaning towards, but I ain't going to say nothing about that right now. 
Okay. I would, that was going to be my follow-up question. So you already answered. <laughs> what does your everyday look like as a fourth year med student? I know everybody says it's like a breeze, but I really don't want to believe that. <laughs> oh, you should. You should. Again, I think it depends on your school. So depending on what your fourth year requirements are and what you have to complete within that time frame, that's how you know whether or not it will be a breeze. Um, for my school, we have to complete 20 weeks of electives between third and fourth year. But I think for first year, I think I completed like 10. So I already completed half, right? And so I end up doing, I end up doing like a student designed elective where I could do a virtual away at one of my top choices for residency and then also research. That's real chill. Um, additionally, we have to do uh, one four week elective, not elective, but a primary care selective because in our mission, we're all about primary care. So that'd be four weeks of that and then four weeks of ICU. So if you are able to get your schedule together where you can do the requirements early, so all you have to do is electives, you got a chill situation. And most schools around the time of interviews, they have it so that you can have that time off to just interview. So I think those are kind of the things that make it chill. Again, different schools have different requirements for fourth year, so it depends on your school. But yesterday I was on the couch watching Girlfriends all day. <laughs> nice. I actually filmed a day in the life of like a second year med student yesterday. Mm. My best friends are like, you need to do this. You're ridiculously crazy and you do so much. And I was like, no, I yeah. don't. And then I recorded it and I was like, oh, I do do a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll say like, it's a nice it's night and day from third year. Like, like third year, I was doing a lot and first year and second year because it's so much to fit into your days you know but you know we're much to fit in now so yeah <laughs> what did you do during medical school you know like your first couple of years that you think distinguish you most as like an internal medicine residency applicant well i would say the first two years don't count first two years you're just trying to learn mm -hmm. and and get past that um and understand how you study best and how you handle stress and what are your methods of coping with stress and anxiety. Um, I think those are the kind of things that you should be focusing on your first two years. You don't need to be worried about what specialty you're going to do until third year, honestly. But I mean, it feels good to know. So outside of that, like my school, we start rotations first year. So I was in a primary care clinic most of first year, which helped me rule that out. Um, not everybody gets that opportunity. So getting the opportunity to have a preceptorship or to shadow during your first two years would be great. Um, so that's how I ruled out primary care. And then second year, we had more specific rotations like in women's health. So I got to do a taste of OB. It wasn't, it was, it was beautiful. I cry every time a baby's born. I cried all throughout OB dying because life is beautiful and I just want to photograph it, but I don't want to be there with women all day, every day. Mm, yeah, no, not really. Um, it just seems like a very stressful situation when it should be, to me, it should be more beautiful. Anyways, that's, I'm going on a tangent. Either way, for me, we had experiences to be able to rule things out early. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a school where you get to go into clinics and stuff, I would just advise, like, try to shadow, try to get a preceptorship, because I know a lot of schools do that, um, that allow you to start exploring. And also, you have to reflect for yourself, like, what kind of lifestyle do you want when you um, become a physician? Do you love surgery or do you hate it? That can help you narrow down for the first batch do you love kids or do you hate kids or you not like their parents you can really rule out a lot of things if you just kind of reflect for yourself too yeah so how do you feel that you know within less than a year you're, you'll officially be done with med school and move it on? is surreal it is surreal i was literally thinking about all of the, sh the obstacles and the struggles that i've had to overcome to be here from undergrad to getting through like deaths in the family while still going through uh, grad school and post back to working to build up my GPA, working to build up my confidence um, and working to focus on joy throughout all of it. I think um, it's, it's like, it's gonna be a full circle moment for sure. It's gonna be a, yet another reminder of all the reasons I have to praise the Lord for bringing me through but and also not to focus on feeling like I'm not prepared 
<laughs> so yeah. I think that's the first thing that comes whenever you go into a new space. You're like, uh, do I belong here? Imposter syndrome, all that stuff. I don't have time for those things. So I'm trying to just work on the fact that I put in the work and I will continue to do so. What do you do outside of medicine to kind of keep you grounded? I know you do photography and you're phenomenal at that. Um, what else do you keep up with? Um, I will say with quarantine, I started, I jumped into the content creator sphere. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that keeps me grounded though. It's work. <laughs> Nobody told me. The money's nice, but it's work. Oh my gosh. Um, started you, doing that. Huh? Are you referring to like the stuff on like Instagram, that kind of stuff? Yeah. So I... I haven't really, I was, I was posting on YouTube and stuff because I feel like it's, it's kind of therapeutic sometimes to just talk about your story and talk about your journey. Yeah. Um, and so I had started a YouTube channel, I think my second year of med school, um, but haven't really touched it much this the past couple of months with being um, president. Um, but I think anything creative can kind of help me to stay grounded. And again, if you're ever sharing your story or mentoring folks, it reminds you of where you've been. And so yeah. I think those are things that I like to engage in as much as possible um, so that I'm constantly reflecting as opposed to having to figure out, let me make time to reflect because girl, you lost in the sauce right now. Um, outside of that, I mean, I love to travel. COVID kind of hit that a little bit. Um, and I love to read, but we never had time to do that until now. So reading again, watching TV and doing mindless things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing on my free time, but also like making sure like I love worship music um, and just like staying, maintaining like my relationship with the Lord is also like, is like paramount to all of those things. A hundred percent. I definitely understand that. I have my worship music going and I'm like, mm -hmm. don't bother me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know you met, you're very well traveled very well traveled what was it i think it was 41 countries i saw on your profile mm. i need to ask top three favorite top three i mean i'm nigerian so nigeria is number one they acting up right now um but nigeria is number one and then i think i would say i love indonesia i really do but maybe thailand thailand takes the take to take second place i've been and dying then, to go to thailand and COVID yeah. happened Thailand, dang, Thailand is... What's your favorite thing about Thailand? I love Thai food. Okay. I love everything about Thai food. The reason I went to Thailand back then, I went for like a month and then ended up going to other places once I realized how cheap the flights were. But the food, I was like, you know what? I love Thai food, so I probably do well in Thailand. It's just so service level. <laughs> and like I had Thai friends too, actually growing up. But um, yeah, it was the food that made me go in the first place. And then I realized like dang it's a cheap it's such a cheap country especially on a student budget I think I had just finished my post back at the time when I went um but there's so much to see and do and the people are so nice um and genuinely happy like to see a Thai person mad is like I think I saw it once in a month which is crazy um so yeah definitely the food I took a cooking class and everything like the food ah, and Thai massages I didn't know they were into massages like that. I didn't know that was like, huh? I didn't know that was a thing of like Thailand. Okay. They got it in every state. Honey, I'm gonna need you to find them in Florida. They not only like need the knots out, but they stretch you out. And that makes so much more sense than just putting pressure and needing the knots. Like I'm gonna need you to untie my knot, my muscle strings right now because right now we acting up. <laughs> that is what they do. Okay. Ah, find it in your area. Find it. In Thailand, though, it would be like $5 for an hour. And it's just like, oh, my God. I'll get yeah, one. Thailand is very cheap. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. what's the third place? Sorry, I cut you off completely. No, you're good. You're good. Third place for right now, Italy is third place. Okay, I love Italy. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific place that you liked? I liked the southern, I don't even remember what it's called anymore, southern coast, like Positano. Um, Positano, Sorrento, oh, the lemon, the little lemon granitas. Yep, that area, that <laughs> area right there. Mm, that is bomb, it's beautiful. Oh my God, I need to travel, but COVID is messing my schedule up. I'm I actually heading into camp, so I'm not gonna travel anywhere, except in yeah. Facebook. <laughs> yep, do that. 
So another thing I kind of wanted to touch upon was I know you're like a figs superstar on these commercials and everything. How's that been going? You know, I mean, it's been good. It's been good. I, I will say I never imagined that this is where I would be. Again, I never imagined, I would never imagine people would think I was an influencer on all these things either because I'm, I was very, I've always been behind the camera. And so once I got into med school, I was like, you know what? Or before I got into med school, I was like, okay, there was probably something that you need to work through, whether you don't see yourself as beautiful or whatever, but you want to be comfortable in your skin no matter where you are. Yeah. I started to like slowly just take pictures of myself on trips because I never used to take pictures of myself on trips um, and just try to be more comfortable in front of the camera by like saying yes when people wanted to shoot me or whatever. So when Figs found me on Instagram, I will say the first time they asked me to shoot, I said no. <laughs> I was like, no, it's okay, I gotta study. But it was really like, no, I ain't getting in front of the camera, you crazy. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad that I started to say yes because I think it's, it's, it's opened a lot of doors, but more importantly with this last campaign, something that I, not even with this last campaign, I was on billboards last year. And I think that I'm literally the change that I wanted to see. I didn't know any black physicians until I was like 23, 24, which is crazy. And it's hard to be, it's hard to aim for something that you don't see, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, because I've said yes to working with this company that I've been able to, to help little black girls and little brown girls to see and, and see that they can be a doctor too. Yeah. So it's, it's been good. That's awesome. And I completely understand. And now that you say it, I've never seen a black physician until I was in college. So mm -hmm. that is very unfortunate, but I think we're doing better. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this next upcoming class is going to have a lot more black physicians. So oh, wow. it's going to be nice to see. And, and, and when I mean class, I mean like the, this graduating class, like your class oh, I see you're saying. Yeah. Um, that are going to become residents. There's a, there's going to be a lot more people of color. So that'll mm -hmm. be, that'll be positive, especially with like the society that we're living in and what's going on in the world. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> okay well i'm heading into my last question i know you've given us a lot of gems throughout this whole thing about you know not comparing yourself and kind of like it's hard to aim for things when you don't see somebody that looks like you um but is there any i guess two last golden nuggets since you're about to be a full-blown doctor that you can offer to any minority or any pre-med students that are looking to go into medicine yeah. I will say the only thing that qualifies you to going into medicine is that you want to. You feel like you were called to. It's not your grades. It's not your experiences. It is your heart. So if you feel like medicine is where you're supposed to be, then you will get there. Um, the second piece is that I think a lot of times, um, especially in the world and society that we're living in now, people are trying to rush you into things. And so you feel like there is like a time frame for everything. There is no set cookie cutter way of getting into medicine. There is no time like you got to go at this age and this age and this age. When you get there, you get there. So give yourself grace no matter what your journey looks like. If this is what you feel like you have called to, you are being called to do, you will get there at the perfect time and at the right time. Oh, so good. Thank you so much. I want to wish you and your sister both a wonderful interview season. I know y'all are going to kill it. I can't wait to see your match day and all that good stuff, your graduation. Ooh, goodness. <laughs> so I'm very excited for y'all and your parents should be very proud because not one physician, but two. <laughs> Oh, very excited. But thank you for having me. No problem. Your family's going to level up hard this year, and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.